let's draw pictures of people that we love. Before we get started though, let's talk about what a face looks like. In the middle of your paper, let's draw a big oval. Now if you look at the oval and try to figure out where the middle part is, the middle, middle of this oval right here, what do you suppose goes right there? What feature? Would it be eyes, nose, mouth, chin? If you guessed eyes, you're right. I know our nose is in the middle, it's between our eyes and our mouth, but it's not quite in the middle of our face because we have to account for all the top, this is the top of the head, not the top of the forehead. Yes, our nose is in the middle of the top of, from our forehead to our chin, there's our nose. But if you figure that the top of your head's way up here, what's in the middle is the eyes. So we're going to draw a pretend eye right there in the, in the middle, and we have to draw it very lightly. Sketch it, because you're going to erase that, hopefully. Let's draw another eye on this side and another eye on this side. They can be ovals. Sometimes we like to draw our eyes with a curve at the top and the curve at the bottom and make some um, makes little more pointed ovals. Now let's get rid of that right away because it looks very funny. Now from this line, which is in the middle of our face, to the chin, let's draw another halfway line. Now what do you think that is? Kind of looks like the mouth, doesn't it? But it's not the mouth. This is the bottom of the nose. On the bot so draw a little line where the bottom of the nose. So you have a halfway mark in the chin. Cut that in half. Put a little line there. And let's put a cup, a curve, the bottom part of a circle, a little arc, upside down arc. Okay? Now on either side of that, we're gonna go up and around. I'm gonna do it again. Ready? Up and around. That's the nostril of the nose. so big, but everybody's nose is different. Everybody's eyes are different. We're going to finish up the eyes in a few minutes, but we'll just draw everything in its place first. So let's draw, let's erase that part of the line that we had the nose sitting on. It's very confusing. But let's think about it when we think about the bottom of the chin. Split that in half, and let's draw a line right about there. Now what do you think that is? You're right. It's the mouth. So we're going to make that the middle of the mouth, and we're going to make two mountains on either side, like that. One mountain up, and one mountain up on this side, and a little dip in between. Then let's make one big long curve at the bottom. inside, and a circle inside, and a double circle. Now remember, what's the pie in the eye? I'm going to show you the pie in the eye. We did this with fish, but we're going to show you again. So let's do a pie in the eye. Let's do a circle, another circle inside of that. Put a dot right there. Let's make our light source where the light is coming from. Let's make it come from this direction. 
we'll draw a little pretend sun. We can erase that later, but at least we know where the sun is coming from, where the light's coming from. It's hitting the eye, or in this case, this is the eye I'm drawing over here. And we're going to bake a piece of pie open up towards the light source. So two little lines up like that, it makes this little piece of pie. Now we're going to eat everything inside the pie, so let's clean it on out. We've eaten that pie, so it's empty. And let's go to this middle circle and color in everything except the piece of the pie. Now every light living creature has a gl little glimmer in their eye. And when you draw it, it looks really special. So we're going to make sure we keep that section very, we're going to keep it white. We're going to make sure we keep that section white. Put little lines for the iris. We've got the pupil of the eye here. Colored it all in except for where the piece of pie is. Got the iris of the eye. You can make it color. whatever color eye the person that you're drawing, whatever the colors their eyes are, you can color the pupil. I mean the iris. You can color the iris. So let's do that on our little guy down here. Put a dot in the middle of each one of those circles. Make the pie in the eye. Clean out the little section to make sure it's clean. Doesn't have any marks in it. Put the little eye lines for the iris. And there we have an eye. Now what do you think about this guy or girl? They look like this. They look like what we call in Montana deer in the headlights. So that's because there are no eyelids on this person. You have your eyes wide open. It makes the eye look like it's wide open. You can see the iris from top to bottom, the whole eye. So if we put a little bit of an eyelid right here, you can even clean out the eyelid a little bit, clean out the marks with an eraser. And do that here with an eraser. Let's see, I'll use a little eraser here. There you go. If you make it too big, the eyelid gets too big, then the eyes look very sleepy. So you want to make sure you have just the right amount of eyelid, and that's experimental. And the eye gets cut off a little at the, the iris and the pupil get cut off a little bit at the bottom too, so that the eye is not completely open. It looks a little bit more realistic this way. Okay. Now the thing you will find with noses is that nothing, there is no line on the nose except where the nostril area is. There's no lines here. You wouldn't want to put a line like this. Yes, it looks like a nose, but it doesn't look realistic. It's a cartoon nose. This is all done with shading and shadows in a real face. So instead of drawing a line there, maybe when you color it, you can shade it a little bit so there's a little bit of shadow here, but not a line. And then it will look more realistic. If you put too many heavy lines on this person, it makes them look really old. I'm going to fix this nostril so it's not quite so big. This nose is pretty big. That's okay. People have different size noses. Okay. We're missing something. What are we missing? Yes, eyebrows. If you imagined, an, if you drew an imaginary line from the corner of the eyes and slanted it outward, that's about where the eyebrow is. And the eyebrow is hair. So instead of drawing a dark line like I did in the beginning, let's do it like this. Okay, we'll do Slant that out. We're going to get rid of these lines, so make, make them light. But our eyebrow, it grows this way, but it's just hair. So let's make strokes of our pencil and make it look like hair. Again, you 
want to look at the, what the eye, person's eyes look like. Some eyebrows are heavier and darker than others, and some are not, and it doesn't make one better than the other. It makes it look like the person, and that's what you want to do. You want to make this look like the person that you're drawing. So whatever their features look like, that's what you draw. If their eyebrows come to a, meet in the middle, then make them meet in the middle. If there's a section in between, there's space in between, then make sure your drawing has space in between the eyebrows. Same with the eyes. If they're big, make them big. If they're a little bit smaller, make them smaller. If they have bigger eyebrow eyelids at one side of the eye, then make it look like that too. Okay. We are missing something else though. What else are we missing? Oh yes, definitely hair. What about ears? Now where do you think the ears are going to be? They are actually between the eyebrow and the bottom of the nose. So let's draw an ear. I'm going to make a question mark looking shape. A lot of times you can't see the ear because it's covered by hair. And that's fine. Just draw the hair. Don't draw the ear. It makes it easier sometimes. What about hair? No? Okay, you're right. That looks really silly. Some people might wear their hair like that, but then draw it if that's the way their hair really looks. But most people's hair starts all the way down on the forehead, right here. Remember, there's this much space between your forehead and the top of your head. That's the top of your head. So your forehead would be right about here. If this is a girl, then draw a girl's hair. If this is a boy, draw a boy's hair. So I'm going to draw, I'm going to start with a boy's hair. So let's draw, he kind of has a lot of hair, but it's, notice how I'm, I'm going to lighten this part right here. So I don't want the hair, the top of the head to show through the hair. Because hair does have a little bit of bounce to it, and it goes a little bit above that. And notice how I don't have to color it a lot. I just need to make the strokes of my pencil follow the way the hair grows. Then it will look like hair. And you don't have to put that much in there. And maybe there's a little bit of part going here, and maybe there's something in the back there too. And they have a little bit of hair down here on the front part of their ears. And there's my boy. I don't need that dot there. Okay. Very soft hair in here. Just a little bit. I'll draw a girl. How about a girl's hair? Notice how I left some space down here for the neck. So let's put a neck on her. I don't think so. She looks like a bobblehead. We have to make sure that our neck is wide enough to support the weight of the head. That's what nature does. Nature makes sure that the neck supports the head. Now you will find that when you're drawing your friends and your family, that the men's necks are wider often than the woman's neck. So you'll want to accommodate for that. A woman's neck is usually a little bit more slender. You can add some more hair down here. Okay, well you're ready to go draw the people that you love. And I would love to see them, send them to me.